I couldn't find the answers anywhere in the conventional textbooks. And then you start looking at epigenetics, neuroplasticity, the yeah. quantum model of reality, and all of a sudden, I started realizing that there's a whole nother realm of science when you're, when you're no longer looking at normal. Yeah. And uh, so I started studying spontaneous remissions and interviewed hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people all over the world to see what they were doing or what they did, uh, either treating conventionally or unconventionally. So most of them were staying the same or getting worse, and all of a sudden they got better. Yeah. This is Dr. Joe Dispenza podcast. And now let's watch his podcast together. What, what happened there? So, after, and Did you find a consistency? Oh, my God. Yeah, absolutely. There and were four very common things. That, can you tell me? Yeah. First thing is that most people believe that there was an intelligence that lived within them, not outside of them, that that was a resource if they could connect to it, just like I did, and begin to allow it to help them heal, uh, it would be important. So, so uh, there's nothing mystical about this intelligence, and, you know, you can... Some people had a religious take on it. Some people just a spiritual take. Some people were just pragmatists that they just trusted, you know, the whole way. The second thing was that on some level they thought that they had contributed or they were responsible for their own health condition. That the, the 10 years of living in stress and living in stress is living in survival. And stress, as you know, knocks the brain and body out of balance. And so... And it's a scientific fact that the long-term effects of the hormones of stress downregulate genes and create disease. So people spend 70% of their life living in survival and stress, and no organism can live in emergency mode for that amount of time. And yeah. Certain emotions that we feel when we react to people or conditions in our lives, that emergency state, the arousal of the brain and body, drives us to very primitive behaviors yeah. and primitive thoughts. And, and they became came aware that they had to stop being that person. That's a very important thing. They had to break the habit of being themselves. Yeah. And that's significant because they're not relying on now any drug, even yeah. though they're treating uh, with a drug or a treatment or, or surgery, that they're all of a sudden taking more responsibility of paying attention to how they think, yeah. noticing how they act or how they speak, or looking at how they feel and stop blaming somebody from 20 years ago yeah. that they just decided that they had to make the changes. So they had to break the habit of being themselves. Third thing I thought was so fascinating was that they had to reinvent themselves. Yeah. And they started thinking, well, God, if I had a chance, another chance, another shot at life, who would I be? And there's this concept in neuroscience called mental rehearsal. And when you close your eyes and you plan an action or you rehearse mentally what you're about to do, yeah. if you're truly present, the brain doesn't know the difference between what's going on out there and what's going on in here, that the imagery that you're creating, the brain captures as an experience. Yep. So then the experience begins to enrich the brain. So they, over time, began to install the neurological hardware in their brain, the platform of who they would become. And as they started doing that and they started overcoming fear or anger or hostility or uh, pain or suffering, they started getting happy. Yeah. And they started feeling these heartfelt emotions, freedom and gratitude for no reason. Yeah. And the, I think that when they started feeling that feeling independent of what was going on in their life, in other words, they weren't waiting for their healing to happen so they could feel grateful. Yeah. They yeah. were feeling grateful before the healing was just... Gratitude is the ultimate state of receiving. I mean, when you receive something or you've just received something or yeah. something's happening to you or something's happened to you, you feel gratitude. You say, thank you. Yeah. Well, the body is the unconscious mind. It doesn't know the difference between an experience that creates an emotion and yeah. an emotion that you're fabricating by thought alone. So the body starts to feel gratitude. It's believing it's in the actual experience of being healed. So, yeah. and, and the research shows, Chris, that the environment signals the gene. And the end product of an experience in the environment is an emotion. Yeah. So then you can signal genes ahead of the environment if you begin to embrace emotions before the experience. Yeah. And genes begin to make proteins, and proteins give you the, the expression of life. So yeah. this is a time in history where it's not enough to know. This is a time in history to know how. Yeah. And, and so when people start scratching their head and saying, you mean my genes don't create disease, and you can say to them less than 1% of the people on the planet are born with a genetic condition. The other 99 to 95% are lifestyle, behaviors, choices. But why are we always told that? Well, if you want to 
have people become reliant on something outside of them to take away what's going on inside of them, you'll advertise, yeah. <laughs> you know, you'll market. Yeah. You, but people will say, I need this can I need this drug? I need something outside of me to change my internal states. That's profits. That's money. So it's a crazy thing when people start. I mean, evidence is the loudest voice. We have studies to show that you can change your gene expression in four days. Genes that suppress cancer yeah. growth and tumors. Genes to grow new neurons in the brain, not just new connections, but new neurons. Yeah. Genes for oxidative balance. And that's at almost any age? At any age. We yeah. randomly selected just you know, a group of people, and we, we had them think differently, make different choices, do different things, create new experiences, and feel new emotions. Four days. They regulated eight genes in common that, that literally would change their health. Well, um, your body is a protein-producing machine, okay. and every cell in your body makes proteins except for red blood cells. And in order for a cell to make a protein, a gene has to be regulated. Yeah. So then genes are like Christmas tree lights. Yeah. They're switching on and off all the time. And when they switch on, they upregulate and they make a healthy protein. Yeah. When they switch off, they downregulate and they make a cheaper protein. Yeah. So then if you're thinking the same way, making the same choices, doing the exact same things in routine and the same habits, doing the same things that create the same experiences that create the same feelings got the same genes turned on and the other genes turned off yeah. same christmas tree lights on the other one's off now you're headed for a genetic destiny which also ties into the fact that we sort of we see the world the way we want to see it like we have kind of our beliefs and we validate that with everything around us not vice versa sure right sure yeah we don't see things how they are we see things how we are exactly okay yeah. so i just wanted to okay. yeah so, so now we're just running that loop right. all day every day and if you don't know that you have control over your genes then it never crosses your mind right yeah. so then so then the other part of that is that when a person's living by the same feeling and the same emotion every single day and those emotions are influencing the way they think and the way they act yeah and they can't think greater than how they feel or they can't act greater than how they feel and feelings and emotions are a record of the past yeah. They're in a program of the past, right? So the body, again, now is believing it's in the same past experience 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and now you're downregulating a gene. So then if you have a propensity for Alzheimer's, if you have propensity for heart disease, if your family has a propensity for cancer yeah. or ulcerative colitis or MS or whatever, then, of course, it makes sense then that if you're living in the reactions of fear and anger and hostility and envy and jealousy and resentment and and pain and suffering, it's those very emotions that select and instruct genes. Yeah. So then think about this. Two identical twins, both born with the same exact genome. There's no variations. They have the same exact genes. Yeah. One dies at 52, the other one dies at 88. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's got to be some environmental influence, yeah. right? Yeah. So then they used to say genes create disease. One percent of the population you know, uh, has a genetic condition like Tay-Sachs disease or sickle cell anemia or type 1 diabetes. Yeah. The other 99 percent, 95 percent is lifestyle. So then they say, well, it's not genes that create disease. It's the environment that signals the gene that creates disease. Okay. But how can two factory workers working side by side, both exposed to the same carcinogenic chemical? Yeah. One gets cancer and the other doesn't. Well, the environment around the cell is still the inner environment of your body. So then a person who's living, reacting to the same people in the same way, same circumstances in the same way, they keep knocking on the same genetic door. Yeah. And so sooner or later, once that gene is signaled, now all of a sudden the, the cell is programmed to begin to make a cheaper protein. So the question is, can you reverse that process? Well, if it took you five years to create the health condition, you may have to work a little bit to reverse it. Yeah. But yet, we're getting so good at measuring and, and being able to teach people how to do this that it's not uncommon that we see people have a complete remission of a health condition in one week in a week-long workshop that we have. Yeah. Because they understand then they're going to be the governor or the, or the, or the ruler of their own thoughts and feelings, and, and they'll go through a period where they feel really uncomfortable. Yeah. Well, that's because you're in the midst of change. And, yeah. But they're willing to do it as long as they understand that if they keep changing the way they think, act, and feel, yeah. there should be biological changes that take place in the body. And that's exactly what we see.
Gosh. And, and so thoughts and feelings are kind of the core of all this. Yeah. It's being able to manage and get those straight. Okay, well, think about this. Yeah. You wake up in the morning, most people, your, your brain is a record of the past. Yep. It's an artifact of everything you've learned and experienced this moment. It's the memory bank of everything you know. It's the known self. Yep. People wake up in the morning, they start thinking about their problems. 90% of the people do this. Those yep. problems are memories that are etched in their brain. Yep. They're connected to certain people and certain objects and things at certain times and places. Yep. If they believe their thoughts have something to do with their future, the moment they're remembering their past, they're thinking in the past. Yep. Every one of those problems has an emotion associated with it. So then all of a sudden they start feeling unhappy. Well, thoughts are the vocabulary of the brain. Feelings are the vocabulary of your body. Yep. How you think and how you feel creates a state of being. So most people start their day with their entire state of being in the familiar past. Now, when they're familiar past, they're going to crave the predictable future because they want to stay in the known. Yeah. The unknown, whew, that's just, they'd rather hang on to their suffering yeah. and their pain than take a chance in possibility. In fact, they don't even know they're suffering. They just think it's how they normally feel yeah. until they decide to begin to change. So when we're studying spontaneous remissions, people kind of stumbled on this. By, not, by, by trusting something innate in them, something intuitive in them. Yeah. Not so mechanical, but just like, God, if I had another shot at life, yeah. how would I think? How would I act? How would I feel? Who would I become? Who will I be? Yeah. And they began to change by thought alone. The last thing they had in common, which was really incredible, is that when they closed their eyes and began to image who they wanted to be when they opened their eyes, they lost track of time and space. Today, we have a very special outro for you based on the insights of Joe, who shared his thoughts on the power of epigenetics, neuroplasticity, and the quantum model of reality in healing. Joe spent years studying spontaneous remissions and interviewing hundreds of people all over the world to find out what they were doing or did to heal, whether conventionally or unconventionally. He discovered that most of them had a few things in common. First, most people believed that there was an intelligence that lived within them, not outside of them, and that was a resource they could connect with to help them heal. Second, they thought that they were responsible for their own health condition, that they had to break the habit of being themselves and stop living in survival mode. Third, they had to reinvent themselves and started thinking about who they would be if they had another chance at life. Finally, they embraced emotions before the experience, and genes began to make proteins, giving them the expression of life. So guys, if you're watching this and you're struggling with a health condition, know that you have the power to heal yourself. It starts with breaking the habit of being yourself, taking responsibility for your health, and connecting with the intelligence that lives within you. Visualize the best version of yourself and create a mental rehearsal to achieve it. Embrace the emotions that you want to feel and watch how your genes respond to it. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.